Let you, let's get to the word of the Lord here today. Like I said, I'm not here to admonish. I'm here to let you know if you want to get hungry, God's going to fix it. You. Man, God's positive. If you want to sow to the Spirit, you'll reap things in the Spirit. If you want to sow to the flesh, you'll reap things in the flesh. The Bible's real simple. That's not hard. If you want to be fleshy, you'll be fleshy. If you want to be spiritual, you'll be spiritual. Amen. There you go. Sermon's done. Have a nice day. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. More of you, more of you. Lord, we need more of you. Oh, that's not it? I'm sorry. <laughs> and it came to pass when he made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of him was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. I want to stop there. I want you to read that verse because it screams volumes. I want you to read what it says there because it is the, the base piece of the whole book of First and Second Samuel. This one scripture, believe it or not, it screams everything about what I'm about to talk about here today and preach about to you. It came to pass when he made an end of speaking, he consulted with Saul, talk about John, Jonathan, which was Saul's son. Amen. He said, and the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. Amen. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. There's some preaching in that I can't even get to yet. Amen. I want to read also for you 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17 through 27. Talking about a battle for your soul. Amen. Who you consult him with. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. Talking about Jonathan was Saul's son, not David's. Also, he bade them to teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Joshua. The beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places. How are the mighty fallen? Don't you dare publish this in Gath. Don't tell it in Gath. Don't publish it in the streets of Ascalon. Lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. These are both Philistine cities. Lest the daughters of the uncircumcised shout a triumph here. Don't tell them what happened to David. Don't tell them, I mean not David, what happened to Jonathan and to Saul. Don't publish this in those streets. Don't let a word of it be spoken. Don't, don't you go out. Man, I'll tell you this, I'm shouting this too. You mountains of Gibeah, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you. Don't let the fields of offerings for the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. The shield of Saul as though he had not been anointed with oil from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. In other words, they did not go back from whence they came. They didn't make it out alive. They, they were anointed, but they should have made it, but they didn't. Because I think this was type of a message for a sinner. But the more I have read this scripture, and the more I have read the, I realize this is just about a bunch of church folks that I'm reading about today. Just about church folks. I'm not here to pick on you or stomp on your shoes. Or, I want you just to, I want to give it to you like the Bible gives it to you. Amen? Because I, I, I have read these scriptures and they, they scream at me today. As if someone was shouting from a hilltop. And Listen to what speaks the word of God. What it says to us today. Don't, don't take these things. You can be seated. I'll pray in a minute. Amen. You don't publish that Jonathan and Saul was destroyed. Don't, 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 don't you get on Facebook and make all this known. Don't you tell about how somebody fell in the church. Don't, don't, don't make this some kind of published event that you just can't wait to let somebody know about on the gossip column train. David said, don't you dare do it. Because you don't know what's taking place here today. Don't you get on your message board about how some 
now cutting her hair and she's doing all this and putting makeup on her face and she's, you know, don't you do it. Don't publish this abroad. It's a shameful thing we're talking about. He said, I, I don't want you to publish this stuff out here. Because at one time they were anointed of God. At one time they meant something to God. Amen. At one time their life was nipped to him. Don't publish it. Don't get in your little forums and start making a big deal out of this stuff. You should be praying over and crying over them. But instead, it's nothing more than fodder for you. Something to talk about. But David said, don't you do it. Don't you dare do it. Spirit cries, don't do it. Don't you know what these people were? They meant something. They were knit. Their souls were knit unto David. I begin to read this scripture and I... Mm. I want to preach for just a few moments here today. Jonathan, choose life. Choose life. I'm not going to finish that scripture, brother. It's just more of David crying out. Even you all got the gist of the point. I want to pray for just a moment and ask God's help here because I need him to help me to preach this today because I'm trying to reach somebody today. I need to get a hold of you before you go somewhere. I need to get a hold of you before you do something you shouldn't do. I need to find a way to reach you, amen, before you go too far past. You slip away. Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I bless you and I praise you and I worship you. Lord, I'm asking for your power and your authority. Lord, let conviction be laid upon the heart here today. Not because of who I am, but because of who you are. Lord, I pray today, Lord God, you'll speak to somebody's soul here today to help them, oh God, not to fall short of the things of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I have often wondered what it felt like for Jonathan that day when at the end of his life, he who had been winning many battles against Philistines his whole life, he was a king's kid. When here he was gaining victories against Philistines and talking about him now too. Saul had slain his thousands, David's his ten thousands, but the men that he served with, he men, were talking. The public didn't know who he was. He was a private man. They didn't have a clue who this man was. And they knew he was Saul's son, he men, and the publishings went about David and Saul, amen, because Saul got all the glory for the victories over the Philistines, but yet it was Jonathan who actually won the battles, amen. It was Jonathan that was going up against him with his armor bearer and going to war with Philistines and consulting God about what he should do, and, amen, getting a hold of God for how he should get the victory over the Philistines. He wasn't even getting the glory for it, amen. His dad was getting the glory for it. He wasn't getting the glory. His dad was getting the glory for it. His king over him was getting the glory for it, but Jonathan was a foot soldier, and he, amen, but he was a king's kid, amen, and don't ever forget it. And here he was now, amen, uh, toward the end of his life, amen, watching now as the Philistines were upon them all, and they were losing their final battle against them. They were losing the battle, amen, with the Philistines. David was not there with them. He was on the run from Saul once again, amen. David was no longer there to help them, amen. It was just them, amen, battling Philistines, amen, without the help of David. And as they went along with this battle, amen, as they went along with this war, amen, and amen, they came running to Saul and let him know that they were overrun, that they were going to be killing him, that, that there's nothing more they could do. It was them two against whatever, amen. And I'm sure Jonathan was thinking now, Amen. Much like most folks have said, you know, I, I've seen the events of my life pass before my eyes when they've had a near-death experience. And will that be true or not? I really don't know. I'm not one to argue with them. Amen. I, I tend to agree with them, I guess. And, uh, but I know this much. Jonathan probably was thinking to himself, if only I would have went with David when I had the chance. Because now, my dad, we're standing next to one another. My my, my father, the king of Israel, where he has his own sword and he's trying to fall on his own sword so that he couldn't say the Philistines killed him. He, 
wasn't going to have that. Amen. He said, I can't have the Philistines saying that they killed me here. Amen. That's why David was so adamant, don't publish this. Don't let, give them something to brag about. Don't give them something to talk about. Amen. And as he began to fall on that sword, amen, somebody else, amen, amen, he, he, he couldn't even quite finish the job, amen, and he had, a, he had to have his armor bearer finish the job for him, amen, and then also here come the Philistines to slay Jonathan, and here, here, Jonathan, amen, is slain also, and amen, the Bible says the Philistines, they, amen, what it, they, they, were, they were the type that once I beat you, I'm not just going to beat you, I'm going to embarrass you, amen, and they, took the bodies of Saul and of Jonathan, amen, and they put them on these walls of Beth Shan, amen, and they put them out there for everybody to see. See, we got another one. We got another one of you folks, another one of you so-called apostolic folks. We, got, we put you on the walls of Beth Shan up here, and we want the whole world to take a look at you. And I want to see because, you know, they're rejoicing in the bar room because you didn't make it. They're rejoicing over there because of all of you, you just didn't make it. You couldn't get there, amen. And if you'd have chose David, maybe you'd have had a chance. But instead, you chose Saul instead of David, Jonathan. Jonathan, you have heard, amen. You know exactly. When you met him, your soul was knit to him. The time that you met him, your soul was pulled into him. And you couldn't help but realize that that relationship with David was going to mean something, Amen. Amen, there are those that try to say that this was some kind of other type of relationship because they only think after the flesh, amen. But that's not the relationship it was, amen. Amen, it was a relationship of bonding, amen, of these two men, amen, but not the kind of bonding that some folks like to think it was, amen. Instead, amen, there's a spiritual bond that was built between these two men, amen. These two men, he said, I, I know that somehow when I'm with David, good things begin to happen. When I'm with David, great things take place. I mean, I came up with my armor bearer, and I saw a bunch of a bunch of Philistines, not just one or two, but a whole host of Philistines were sitting on this ledge above me, Jonathan said. And I remember thinking to myself, when I was hanging out with David, amen, and we were going to war with the Philistines when David was in the camp with us. I, I remember, amen, there's something different about how our army fought them. We, we would get into the trenches, and, and we'd, hit, we'd win battles, it seemed like. It, it seemed like we always turned the Philistines back when, when David was in the camp with us, amen. He said, this time, amen, I, uh, uh, they, they, these, there were a bunch of them up there, man. I mean, it was just, wasn't just one or two, but a bunch of them up there, and they were above me. And I thought to myself, you know, uh, surely can we take it? I talked to the armor bearer. You think we can go? You know, for some reason in myself, I thought, you know, we got David in the camp. I can take them all. Amen. I, I'm just one fella, but something tells me I can take them all. Amen. And, and so he goes and he, amen, and makes a deal. Amen. And he says, I'm going to go ahead and, amen, and I. Uh, I'm going to lay out my personal lack of fleece, if you want to call it. You've got to remember the Holy Ghost wasn't indwelt then, and so they would leave out fleeces. And his mindset was if, uh, if we call out to them, if, if, they, if they tell us to come up, amen, that means we can take them. If they tell us to stay here, amen, that means we, we can't take them, amen. He said, and they called out to the Philistines, and the Philistines called and said, come on up here, amen. In other words, we got the high ground, amen. Uh, we're not concerned about you one iota, amen, you and your little armor bearer. What do you think you're going to do against us? And, and he said, you know, I don't think he understands, amen. I, I've got something inside of me that says we can take them. Amen, I got something the size of me that says we can take these guys. And so he goes and, amen, he said, that's a sign, armor bearer, that we're going to win a victory, amen. And so he goes up to that next level, and he destroys the devil that was on the next level, amen. And, and he takes the victory over him, amen. He didn't wait for the Philistines to come down to him, but he went up uh, after the Philistine, amen. And, you know, too many times we sit back and just wait for the devil to punch us some more, amen, when we ought to be the ones uh, that ought to be taking some swings every now and then, amen. When somebody's convinced you, amen, that you can't win the battle, Amen. Let me tell you who's convinced you. Your flesh has convinced you that you cannot win the battle. Amen. But my spirit has convinced me that I can. My spirit said I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. I can do all things because when David is with me, when the anointed one is with me, all things become possible through him. I'm here to tell somebody here today. God said that you can do all things when you live after the spirit but when you try to do this mess after the flesh you're going to fail every single time and the problem with some of us is we can't get past our relationship with Saul long enough to realize that our relationship with David ought to be greater than our relationship with Saul man we're too busy caught up in fleshly things 
and what I got to do on my agenda. But yet, why can't God be worked into your agenda? Well, come on, Jonathan, choose life. Because if you hang out with Saul too long, you're going to end up with Saul. And the fate of Saul will be your life. When Jonathan was with Saul, amen, I guess maybe I, he's like no different than we are. He has decisions to make. Every day he woke up with a decision today. You see, it's funny every time Saul, <laughs> let's just be honest, Saul and David just didn't get along. The flesh and the spirit, they hate one another. Let's just be honest here. They're just contrary to one another. That's what the Bible says. They're just contrary. I mean, the, the flesh is going to throw spears at, at the spirit all day long. That's what it does. Come on, let's get up and go to church. No, let's lay down and go to bed. Get up, lay down. Get up, lay down. Well, preach it, Brother D. I know it is. Man, maybe it was because his relationship was was close to him he was a king's kid after all I mean this is dad I mean, this is dad let's face it dad was all about stuff we, the Bible tells us that King Saul was even when they found him he was found amongst his stuff he was all about stuff his whole life I just need stuff give me a Corvette give me this give me 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 I need I need I need I need I need I gotta have I gotta have I gotta have the people have chosen him to be the king God didn't want them to have a king, but they had chosen a king, and God permitted it. Amen. He was an heir entitled to all the things that the throne had to offer him. Saul may have slayed his thousands, but he slayed somebody. Well, I could get into that, but that's another message for another time. Hmm. But it's always funny, it seemed like, that David and Saul, they may not have got along, but boy, every time the Philistines would raise their ugly head, Saul said, okay, David, you can come back to the house now. It's okay, you can come back now. Because he knew with David he won. Amen? When everything's all quiet again, everything's all good, he didn't need him. I know some folks like that. Amen. All of a sudden, the doctor calls. You got some bad news. Hello, Apostolic Church. On Facebook, I'm going to talk about you like a dog when you're gone. Amen. I'm going to talk bad about you. Amen. In my conversations on the phone. Amen. Them bunch of holy Joes. That's all they talk about. Not cutting hair and how you wear your pants and then. So sick of them people, sometimes they make me mad. Who do they think they are? Come on, I know what you think. I'm no dummy, but I also know when you get in trouble, I know where you come to. Why? Because that's all always does. It's in the Word of God. That's how I know. I don't need to have any of your, I, I don't need anybody to tell me it's okay. I know it's okay. It's in the Word. Amen. Trouble comes along, amen, here comes the phone calls, amen. They don't want nothing to do with you, amen, when things are going right for them, amen. But when things go wrong, hello, they start calling them church folks again, amen. Why, amen, because, listen, this is not a hard, this happens to everybody. Because when our relationship with Saul becomes greater than our relationship with David, it happens to everybody. Church folks and non-church folks alike. We start struggling with stuff, amen, when all of a sudden we can't get things right with God in our life. Amen. Why? Because we're relying too much on the flesh and looking at the things in the flesh. Amen. I find it interesting that even in victory, even, can I tell you, here's the thing about flesh folk, what they don't understand about the flesh. The flesh don't really care about you regardless. You know how I know that? Here it is, Jonathan was, one horse for his daddy, doing everything he could for him. Amen. All of a sudden, dad calls the fast. Jonathan didn't even hear about the fast. Amen. He goes and has a great victory against the Philistines. He comes back down, and dad's ready to kill him. About a fast he'd never even heard of because he was too busy going to war. 
Now, ain't that just like our flesh? Come on, all those buddies of ours, even when we go to jail, all of a sudden they don't know who we are. All them so-called friends we got, they just turn on us when it's time for... Come on, all these so-called friends, all these buddies of ours we hang out with and all these people that are so friendly to us, where are they when you need them? My God. Man, that's good preaching, Brother B. I'm going to preach myself happy. Amen. I don't need you all today. I'll take care of this myself. Amen. My goodness. But yet, because it was family, he stayed with him even until death. You know how many folks I know won't serve God because they can't break away from their own family and what they think about them? They got family members that think a certain way about them and they can't break away from them. They can't, you know, well that, but that's my family, Brother D. Well, I'm here to tell you something. I love my family. I, I've never known a person hate their own flesh. Come on, I feed mine every day. I know I love him to death. Amen. When he gets hungry and wanting that blue ice cream or butter pecan, I give him butter pecan. <laughs> right, Brother Bill. Y'all can have that Smurf stuff. Give me butter pecan. Amen. But you know how many people I know, amen, because of family, amen, won't break away from things. I had a conversation with a family member of mine not too long ago. I wanted her to know that Jesus was coming. And for once, I didn't let her off the hook. I said, not today. I'm not letting you off the hook today. Maybe I, maybe I was wrong for it. I don't know. I'll probably bump to him for a while now. I don't know how this goes. Now we have to wait till Christmas. I said, you know, Jesus is coming. Man, I tell you, the signs of the times are all pointing out. Man, the world events are just quiet over the phone. I won't say which one it was, just in case they hear this message and they're listening on the Internet somewhere. But I just wanted them to know. I, 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 Y'all know my message already, so if I try to tell you again, I know what you're going to say to me. You're going to shut me down and tune me out, so I'm going to try to let the Word do its work. I said, let me, let me explain to you something. I said, we don't have much time left. I know it, man. I'm telling you, Scripture declares. And then I started talking. Man, the Holy Ghost started moving. Felt the Holy Ghost start. And I said, doors open. Look out. Started stepping in. See, and I started listening. <laughs> Stop worrying about the objections. And I just walked in, and I said, start talking about, hey, amen. <laughs> you see, here, here, here's where a little knowledge goes a long way. I know some of the objections. But see, I didn't speak directly to the objections. I spoke indirectly to the objections. I made it about somebody else. So I wasn't talking to them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you could use a see thing. So I just started talking about speaking in tongues, understanding tongues about how some folks just got it all wrong and think, see, I have some friends of hers and she's... She's got some friends, and oops, that gender, look out. She's got some friends of her that says they're speaking in tongues, so that's just one of the gifts of the Spirit. And I started talking about three different types of tongues and why there are three different types of tongues. And I started going on and on, and, I, and man, I'm, I mean, I just went all authoritative. Hey, man, I just, you know, I laid it out there, Doria and Charisma, what the difference was, and I just, quiet, just listening to that. I thought, you know what, I got all this knowledge, I'm going to use it on you whether you like it or not. I'm going to unload she didn't put the phone down. She didn't put the phone down. She said, so-and-so's going to church. We're going to a different type of church. I won't get into that. I said, oh. Yeah, they're just... So they, they, they like it because there's no preaching. It's just teaching. They don't believe in all that yelling at you stuff. I said, well, they better, they better read that Bible again, Audrey. I said, oh. They said, the Bible said we're saved by preaching. We're edified and built up by teaching. I said, nobody wants to be tore down. I said, that's the generation we live in. I said, when I was in the military, let me tell you something. When I was in the military, I said, the first thing they do, they tore you to shreds. 
was nothing left of you so they could build something else up in you. Amen. I said they told the Europe, they took, they took the old portion, they tore him down, they put the new portion they wanted to see built back up. I said, don't be ashamed of good preaching, even if it hurts you to the core. Don't ever be afraid of it. Amen. I've had some preachers absolutely, absolutely hurt, destroy my heart. I'm so thankful they did. I never thought I'd say that, but I'm just being honest with you. Sometimes they, they tore some things out of me that need to come out. You, some things you can't just, some things don't just come out on their own. Amen. Some things you have to go and get some tweezers and pull them out. Amen. Sometimes the blood will flush it out. Amen. But sometimes you've got to get some tweezers in there and yank it out. Amen. I thank you for the word of God. But sometimes we, you see, <laughs> Jonathan was all about the instant gratification of what the throne could bring him. Even though he knew what it was like to experience the touch of God in his life. You see, David represented God. You, can I tell you, can, can, can I get a couple people here to help me right now? I just need a couple people just right here. Would you stand up here for me? Just two people. Stand up here for me. Two people. Come on, you can get out of your chair. I ain't going to kill you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Flo. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chris. Stay right here, Sister Flo. Come over here, Brother, uh, Brother Chris. I want you to take a look at this. Amen. Now, don't take this personally. If you all want to switch places, I know when I was a kid, everybody wanted to wear the white hat. One of you has to be the bad guy here, okay? So don't you take the bet. Thank you, Brother Chris. Okay. Amen. This is Saul. Say hello, Saul. And this is Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. I'll be Jonathan. I'm making decisions here right now. And this is David, the spirit. Amen. This is the body. This is the soul. And this is the spirit. The Bible says that soul that sinneth shall surely die. This thing makes decision based if it wants to hook up. That's what Jonathan was doing. Should I hook up with Saul? That's what he said. Well, Saul's going to give me this, and I can get this instantly with Saul. I can have, he's already a king. Well, let's face it, folks. Jesus said his kingdom is not of this world. Come on. Let's be honest with you. The instant gratification comes to these folks, amen, that don't know God. It does. Instant gratification. They're the ones that seem like they're rejoicing now with stuff, amen. They got stuff. They got things, amen. They're allowed to, they don't have to pay tithes. They don't have to do none of that stuff. They, they can just, you know, come on. This one over here said, but if I can wait, like David's going to wait. David said, listen, I'm hiding out in holes sometimes. Uh, my, my accommodations ain't always the best. Right? But one day I'm going to ascend to the throne. And when I ascend to the throne, my, oh, my, oh, my, I'm going to have 40 years of reign. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Amen. I, I want you to understand something. That's what, that's what this real battle was about with Saul and with the battle that he had, amen, with, and, and the, the battle with David, amen, there was, the real battle was that these two were fighting one another, amen, the reality of it is, is Jonathan was stuck in the middle saying, who do I choose, who do I serve, who do I choose, who do I serve, if I serve Saul, I have the things I want right now, but it may destroy me, amen, <clears throat> yet some people don't realize it will destroy them, they think they can have it both, you can't have it both. You get one or the other. Amen? You can't sit on the fence because the devil owns the fence. The reality of it is, amen, when you're in the city, you're in the city. But when you're out of the city, you're out of the city. The Bible said that Jesus was crucified outside the gate. He had to, folks. God could not curse Jerusalem. So he had to be crucified outside the city. Amen. Can I tell you something, folks? Amen. We need to choose life. We need to choose life. And don't think just because you're apostolic, you've been repentant of your sins, and you're water baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, that Saul don't come and say hello to you. The flesh king will still rise up, amen. The flesh king will come along and constantly, constantly, constantly remind you that you're part of his family. Constantly remind you, amen, that you're part of his, his kingdom, amen. You, you remind you, amen, uh, you have battles with these flesh that are hard to get rid of. They're hard to get rid of. But David said, you know what? Him and Jonathan got together that day and they made an agreement between them two. They had a covenant between them two. This is what scares me about apostolic folks. There was a covenant they made. Jonathan said, I'm going to give you all of my armor. 
type of Old Testament covenant that, that, that's a teaching for another time. But what that was was that we are knit together forever. Amen. We are friends forever. I'll give you. I will give it to your family. Anything your family desires, I will give it to them. That's what that was because that's how I feel about you. That was part of their. But yet what he most, he said, no, there needs to be more. This battle with the flesh and spirit will never stop. It's the same battle you face when it's time to worship. It's the same battle you face when you wake up in the morning. It's the same battle you face every single day when you're making decisions. It seems like you're always making decisions. I'm here to tell you, choose life, Jonathan. Choose it. Y'all can be seated. Thank you for standing and helping me. You see, we don't ever want to get to the place man, where Jonathan helped us. With Jonathan, with David, his friendship was deep. With David, he defended Philistines. With David, he was blessed in everything. With David, amen, he would slay his ten thousands. Amen. With David, he was anointed, and Jonathan knew it. Yet Saul was chosen by people, but David was chosen by God. You see, the reason can't get away from the flesh, amen, is because they're chosen by people and not by God. I want to get along with everybody else. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've told folks this. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. The world will never truly accept you. It will tolerate you. Because you've got something inside of you, amen. You've been knit, amen, with God. And you'll never truly be happy. But oh, when they see you fall, if they see you fall, they'll put it on Facebook. That's why you apostolics aren't allowed to, like David said, don't you publish this stuff. Don't you rejoice in it. Don't you get all excited because somebody else fell and it gave you to talk about. Just the opposite is true. You ought to find a prayer room and start praying for him, hoping to choose David again. You ought to find a place where don't, don't rejoice in it. Instead, instead, weep in it. Because he said the mighty have fallen. They were mighty and never knew they were mighty. They had something powerful, but yet didn't realize just how powerful it truly was the instant gratification of a world. You see, what it really boils down to is that Jonathan flirted with the Spirit, but also that we would not break free from the flesh. When I look around you folks here today, it's the devil's job to wear you out with tasks the Bible said he'll try to wear out the saints of the Most High God. If you feel worn out, you might be a saint of God. But if you're good and rested, I'm worried about you. But the Bible does say the Holy Ghost is our rest. The problem with saints of God is we've forgotten how to get in touch with the Holy Ghost. We spent so much time dealing with Saul. You see, don't you, David, Jonathan spent so much time over Saul fighting over David. But, but, but David, he, you know, he helps us with Philistines. I, you've chosen David over the family. What's wrong with you? Do you know what everybody else is doing, don't you? Why can't you have a drink at the wedding like everybody else? I have a family member that getting married here soon. Well, <laughs> shouldn't call it married. Wouldn't know if I'm going. Can't go. Can't endorse something that's not scriptural like that. Sorry. It's 
separate me even more? Probably. But I know I got coming. I'm sorry, family. Don't take it personal. I've just chosen my lot with David. Y'all may not understand it, but I do. See, I'm not concerned if I win the race with things. I'm concerned that I win the race with God. I want us all to stand right now. I've lost the children. When I lose the children, I know it's time. It's okay. They're like an alarm clock for me. It's okay, really. I was done. I was done. It's a, they, they just remind me I'm not going to be like that one brother used to preach. The anointing's done off of me. He still kept on going. Olivia's just going to tick tock, tick tock. You're done. Amen. Anointing's done left you, Brother D. It's time for you to shut up. Amen. You can say amen to that. It's probably true. I said what I needed to say here today. The reason I said it, I'm talking to apostolic folks. I just came to remind you one more time. I want you to look at what happened to Jonathan. And don't let that be you. God don't give us these messages for no reason at all. These messages are here for a reason. Choose life, Jonathan. Choose life. I want us to lift our hands unto the Lord right now. Can we do it all over this building? Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost surging through me right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, right now, Lord God, I need you to touch somebody here today. I want, I want everybody just to lift your hands. I want you to start calling upon the name of the Lord right now. Come on. Come on, call upon his name right now. Come on. Ah, come on. If you want to bear fruit, you know how you spell fruit? It's, you has to come before the I. Amen. Come on. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Lift the Oh, David stepping on the scene. He's reaching right now. Yea, the son of David has walked in here right now. His name is Jesus. Come on, huh? He went to a place called Calvary for you. Amen. Huh? He said, I've got a covenant I want to give you here today. I want to remind you of the covenant that we've got together. Amen. You, you repented of your sins. You've been water baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. I filled you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, come on. You need to, uh, the Holy Ghost is your rest here today. Uh, if you're weary here today, uh, if you're battling things of the flesh, come on. Uh, Brother Lloyd helped us earlier right now. Amen. Uh, he told us to get back into the word. Amen. Uh, I'm here. Today, today to choose life. Amen. Uh, come on, Jonathan. Let's choose life today. Let's choose David. Come on. Uh, amen. Don't let your flesh become king in your life. Amen. Uh, but let the Spirit of God become the cut to Let it become the king in your world today. Uh, right now. I want somebody to lift your voice to him right now. Can somebody cry out to him here today and begin to thank him right now for bringing you out of darkness? Uh, you do his marvelous like. Can somebody begin to magnify him and glorify him here today and thank him for another day today? Come on. Come on, them flesh kings calling to you. I hear him calling right now. Amen. You need to know, you need to tell him to be quiet for just a moment uh, and say, flesh king, I don't want you to hear me right now. I want God to hear me right now. I want God to hear my voice here today. Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, I praise you. Lord Jesus, I magnify you. Lord Jesus, I lift you up uh, and exalt you and praise you and glorify your holy uh, and precious name here in this house today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to choose the right things here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like us all to come and pray right now. Can we do it? Amen. Find a place to pray right now. Can we seek God's face here today? Amen. Sister Tiffany, I can handle, I can handle come up here. I just want someone to pray right now. I want someone to take a time to pray right now. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I want you to find a place to pray right now. Come on. Just put your head down and pray. Can you do it? Amen. Come on. Amen. Spend a few moments in prayer if you can. Amen. If you if you got to deal with children, go on and deal with the children. I understand that. I'm talking about folks that are able to pray. I want you to come and pray. Amen. I want you to come and pray right now. I want you to ask God to help you with the things of the flesh. Say, God, I need you to help me here right now. Come on, God knows what you're dealing with. Amen. He knows what you're happening with in your world and what's going on in your life. Amen. But it's important that we seek David here today. Let's invite him back into the kingdom. Can we do it? Lord, I want to invite you back in here, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I want you to begin to take the reins of my heart once again. Lord, I want you to begin to hold of me again, oh God, that I might draw forth the things of your kingdom, oh God, of your divine nature, of your divine spirit right now. Help me here today, I pray. Jesus, Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.